Hello and welcome to Dawn Chorus Writes, Miraculous Ladybug fan fiction and audio fiction. This is a special one shot written by Shika, narrated by Dawn myself, hello, and is part of Miraculous Summer. So I hope you enjoy it. Massive shout out and thank you very much to Feely for the use of her beautiful stunning artwork for the thumbnail. It sums it up perfectly. So make sure you go and send her some love. All her information is down below. Make sure you go and send Shika some love for writing it. All her information is down below. And make sure you send me some love by smashing that like button. Comment down below what you think of it and make sure you subscribe so you do not miss out on other one shots and series and other goodies coming your way and i hope you enjoy if you give a mouse some sun cream adrian was excited his father was out of town on business meeting some important investor connection with madame suhuri in tokyo his schedule was clear of the endless photo shoots Gable required of him over the summer holidays for the first time in years. To top it all off, Natalie had actually suggested he spend some time with his friends. If that hadn't been weird enough, she had given him a sad, wistful smile and a pat on the shoulder before she left the breakfast table. Adrian knew something must have happened to cause a rift between his father and his secretary. Natalie had been even more distant, more withdrawn than usual, and he had caught her shooting dark looks at his father's office door when he had seen her pass it. Whatever had happened between them had been enough to disturb the usual unflappable assistant and for Gabriel to leave her behind when he left for Japan. Whether his empty schedule or her encouraging him to spend time with his friends was part of her rebellion against her boss or not, Adrian would have been a fool not to take advantage of it. Which is how he found himself at a pool party with friends for the first time in his 17 years. If it hadn't been for all the water, Plague would have loved it. Everywhere was wet, beautiful chaos. Alex was sitting on Kim's shoulders and tried to push a giggling Mylene off Ivan's. Rose, Julika and Nathaniel were throwing a beach ball back and forth to each other, though Adrian could only tell it was Nathaniel by the colour of his hair. The artist looked like a drowned rat, but the smile on his face was the biggest Adrian had ever seen on him. Dude! Nino exclaimed, launching himself out of the pool and rushing to greet him with a very wet hug. I thought you said your father wouldn't let you come to something like this. He leaned forward and whispered conspiracy in his ear. Did you sneak out? Is my pool party going to be busted by cops looking for a kidnapped supermodel? Let me know, bro, and I'll totally hide you in the towel cart. They're not dragging my boy off in cuffs because your dad's got his knickers in a twist all the time. Adrian snorted with laughter. No, I didn't have to for once. Father's out of town on business and Natalie suggested I might even have some time with friends today. By the way, something is up with both of them. Father's never left her behind before. I mean, she practically runs the company for him. Not to mention your life, Nino muttered darkly. He shrugged. She was the one who saw how much I wanted to go to school and rearranged my schedule to make it happen. I could forgive her pretty much anything based on that alone. Whatever, dude. Just glad you're here. Adrian sighed and handed him the package he had brought with him. Same here. Oh, and here's your present. I'm glad I get to give it to you on your birthday rather than waiting who knows how long to see you. Yet another wet hug soaked his already sopping shirt. You're the best, man. He wrapped his arms around his best friend, squeezing him back. Pretty sure that's my line, you know. How many times have you been there for me for when I've flaked because of photo shoots or extra lessons, let alone the kumas? Anytime, Adrian, anytime. Just don't show me up too badly when Alia gets here, okay? Pfft, you guys have been pretty much attached to the lips since you were 14. I doubt she's going to drop me even if I was interested. You're practically the definition of relationship goals. Nino chuckled softly in his pun. Yeah, well, nothing says bye-bye boyfriend like a supermodel in a wet t-shirt. 
I'll believe you only when you make all our dreams come true by asking out Marinette. Adrian couldn't help the heat spreading up to his face at his words, even as he grabbed his friend's head and slapped a hand over his mouth. Not so loud! She could have heard you. But Nino just laughed behind his hand. <laughs> if only you realize how funny this is, he said when Adrian released him. Well, I would have if you tell me what's so funny about me liking Marinette, he hissed. Sorry, my dude, but Alia would kill me. I'd rather not die before I marry her. And if she didn't, Marinette would. And she's almost as scary when she wants to be. Marinette is the kindest, sweetest, most lovable girl in the world, you know, he said, leavening a glare at his friend. Doesn't stop her from being scary. You gonna take that t-shirt off or tease the girls with it? Tease us with what? Both of them whipped round to find Alia and Marinette coming towards him. Adrian's jaw started to go slack and his face grew hot as he watched his beautiful classmate walk across the tiled edge of the pool. He had grown up around models and the craziness of swimsuit modelling was just yet another toil he was forced to endure, especially when Lila was involved. But Adrian had never seen a swimsuit like Marinette's. By the standards of swim fashion, it was modest in the extreme. It had wide shoulder straps and a high neckline that was only revealed by a small cut-out heart that showed off just two inches of the creamy skin beneath. From there, it flared out softly down her mid-thighs, more of a swim dress than an actual suit, all in her favourite shades of pink and tied off at the empire waist with a dark grey kerchief knotted scarf. The ruffled edge swirled delicately against the same dark grey on what looked like biker shorts. Unlike the black wand piece Ali was wearing or the embarrassing tiny bikini Lila had worn at the last shoot, Marinette's swim dress left everything of substance covered and completely to the imagination, which was exactly what Adrian's mind was doing. Marinette had certainly blossomed since they first met. Not that she wasn't pretty before, practically every guy in the class had a crush on her at least once after all, but now... That slash of dark grey gave just a hint of the delicate curve of her waist, and the shorts showed off her shapely legs in a way that made his throat go dry. The strappy sandals with the kitten heels that graced her Cinderella feet wrapped her ankles in pink ribbons, and he felt his heart skip a beat. Her legs should be illegal, he thought breathlessly. By international lords, if necessary. But that wasn't the worst part. She had worn her hair in twin buns. The strong, graceful column of her neck was fully exposed, with just a few stray strands curling down around her face. He fought the urge to grab her from behind and press kisses to the back of her neck with all the determination he had ever needed as Cat Noir. Because he was Cat Noir. Marinette had been multi mouse and in every private part of his mind, he wanted nothing more than to catch his little mouse and kiss her until she squeaked. Nino elbowed him in the side with a snicker before leaning on his shoulder. I was just telling this animal he needed to get out of that wet t-shirt before he gave you two a heart attack. Alias snorted diversely. Yeah, right, babe. As if I would ever go for centrifold here when I can have the whole magazine in you. Out of the corner of his eye, Adrian could see Nino blush furiously. He couldn't help but smirk at his friend, and it was his turn to elbow him. Told you, bro. Relationship goals. He wasn't the only one. Marinette elbowed Alia with a disapproving expression. Her lips were pursed and her nose crinkled in frustration. Add in the twin buns and he could have captioned her as disapproving mouse is disapproving and she would have been perfect. He regretted leaving his phone in his gym bag at the lockers, otherwise he would have gone ahead and done it. She might be miffed at him but her cuteness would have gone viral. But if it did, then she would have had half the guys in Paris falling all over themselves for her. He thought as jealousy jabbed at him. Nope, not my mouse. 
And you know I don't like it when you call him that. Marinette was saying, arms crossed over her chest and glaring at her best friend. Oh, come on, Marinette. Sunshine here doesn't care that I call him Centrefold, do you, Adrian? He rubbed the back of his neck as Marinette turned her sky blue eyes on him, one eyebrow raised skeptically. He felt his heart lurch again. First ankles and now eyebrows? I'm hopeless. She's got me hooked, doesn't she? Adrian gave a one-sided shrug. It's not my favourite nickname, Alia, but it doesn't really bother me, Marinette. I am a centrefold. Those blue eyes narrowed and became storm-tossed. She took three strides over to him and poked him hard in the chest. Even in her heels, she barely reached his chin, but Nino had been right. She could be scary. Take your shirt off, she demanded, eyes flashing. His breath caught in his throat as Nino gasped and Alia cackled. What? Marinette had grown more comfortable around him over the years they had known each other, but a sudden random burst of confidence always surprised him. But what was she? What did she? Your shirt! Take it off now! The damp fabric was in his hands before he made the conscious decision to do as she asked. Oh boy! Beautiful, brilliant, and take charge? I definitely have a type. Peeling the shirt off over his head, he realised that his palms were sweaty, and he was sure he looked sunburned already from the amount of blood rushing to his face. It didn't help that Marinette eyed him up and down twice, walking around him as critically as if he was wearing one of her designs for a competition instead of a simple pair of black swim trunks. He felt incredibly exposed and nervous. What was she doing? Did she like what she saw? The thought made him straighten up to his full height, hoping to leave a good impression. Marinette finally stopped her examination and stood in front of him once more. Nope, not a centrifold. Dude, harsh, Nino muttered, looking bugged-eyed behind his goggles. Um, Marinette... I hate to correct you, but... She didn't let him finish before she poked him in the stomach, right at his belly button. The touch of a finger on his skin sent a fusion of heat through him. Sorry, Alia, she declared, staring back at her friend. Until this belly button gets pierced for a staple, Adrian is going to be stuck being the smartest, sweetest guy around, no matter what he does for a day job. And as for you... His eyes widened at a pun just as she turned towards him and rolled up on her toes to tap his forehead. There is more to you than just an attractive boy, Adrian. Don't forget to stand up for what you want, even to us. Got it? Her breath played over his lips and jaw and he couldn't help but stare at the sauce. Her lips were pink and shiny and she smelled of sun cream and some warm berries. He licked his own and saw her eyes flicker down to follow the tip of his tongue back into his mouth. She was so close and she looked so gorgeous and all he wanted to do was to reach out to pull her into him. To kiss those lips that had parted in trepidation. Adrian? Are you okay? She snapped her fingers in front of his face, looking worried as Nino and Alia laughed fit to burst. I think you broke my boy, Nettie, Nino gasped, clutching his side and leaning on Alia to keep him upright. Got got it, he finally stammered out past the flood of hormones, fogging his brain and filling his once dry mouth with enough liquid to water the plants on her balcony. She blushed as pink as a swimsuit and rolled her bottom lip between the teeth nervously. Good. He stammered softly, falling back onto her heels with a little click on the tiles. Still clutching, Alia grabbed her arm. Come on, girl, you're pink enough already. Let's get some more sun cream on you, unless, of course, you'd rather have someone else help. Adrian blushed as the thought of rubbing sun cream on Marinette's creamy neck flashed across his mind. Would she remember that little heart shaped hole at the base of her throat? If she didn't, it would leave a heart-shaped sunburn and... No, no, 
he was not going to think about kissing her better, no matter how much he wanted to. Mariner was his friend and he shouldn't be thinking about her that way. It was disrespectful. By the time he shook himself free from the train of thought, Alia and Marinette were gone and Nino stood smirking at him with a knowing look in his eyes. Dude, you so wanted to help Marinette with a sun cream, didn't you? Adrian groaned and rubbed his burning face with his hands. I'm such a dog, Nino. A dog hopelessly in love with Marinette and she only sees me as a friend. As his friend started snorting with laughter, he grabbed his shoulders in desperation. She's the only girl I've ever known who liked me for just me and not for some other thing and she came dressed as cute as a little mouse and my brain short circuits whenever she gets near me. What am I gonna do? Nino shook his head. Dude, if you only knew how perfect you are for each other. He slapped him on the shoulder. But no worries, bro. I've got your back. Just give me a few minutes and we'll see if we arrange a little mouse trap. He threw him a wink and sauntered off with a wide grin. Those parting words sent a jolt of panic through him. What could he have meant by that? His imagination supplied a slew of ideas involving everything from Marinette spraining her ankle and him gallantly offering to carry her home to him rescuing her single-handed from a senti-monster that had his imagination designed as a giant, evil rubber duck. Regardless of the situation, each scenario ended with her in his arms and staring up at him in wonder, offering to give her knight a kiss for such a gentle assistance. He would graciously accept, of course, and then there would be a big wedding and she would completely win over his ogre of a father and they would run away to a deserted island and they could build a big house and they would fill it with lots of little marinettes and hamsters. Adrian? A gentle voice broke through the rosy fog and he spun on heels to see the object of his daydream smiling up at him shyly. Hey, marinette, he said rather rap. He said rather loudly, and found himself rubbing the back of his neck nervously. Uh, did you need something? No, but Nino said he was worried that you didn't have any sun cream with you. Since he knows, and I always bring extra, he suggested I let you use them. He glanced over to where Nino and Ali were clustered next to Kim and Max. He saw his friend give him a thumbs up, and then made a rubbing motion and tapped his shoulders. Adrian swallowed and barely suppressed a wide grin that threatened to spill across his face. Uh, that would be great, Marinette, he said excitedly. I've only been swimming indoors pools before, and I guess I didn't come prepared. Anything I need to know about this? She held the blue and orange bottle out to him with a grin. Well, just make sure you get a good coverage on all the exposed skin and make sure you rub it in well. Remember your ears and the top of your hands and feet. Those are the places I tend to forget anyway. Sounds good. He flipped the cap open and squirted a big blob of the thick white lotion into his palm. That's when his brain caught up with him and he just stared at the gloop, unsure of what to do with it. Marinette chuckled. That's a lot of lotion. Need any help? He almost died right then and there. Cheeks burning, he nodded. After all, it was better for him to not speak when his mouth was full of overwhelming words of love that would surely destroy the moment as quickly as Plague's catalysm. Taking his empty hand, she led him over to one of the lounge chairs that lined the pool area. You better sit down or I won't be able to help much. She collapsed immediately onto the chair between them and she giggled. She reached over his shoulder to scoop up a large dollop of the sun cream and began to rub it into his shoulders. Adrian froze as a delicate, gentle hand spread the lotion across the back of his neck and down his shoulder blades, thinking of cold showers, his father disapproving look, plagues, cheese stash and anything but the way his skin prickled and his heart raced at a touch. You're so tense, Adrian she exclaimed, the rubbing shifting to a massage and he reflectively rolled his head against her hands. What happened? Standing still for several hours for fittings and or modeling poses is not as easy as it looks, he replied. 
his voice much deeper than normal with a husky edge to it as he needed away the tension in his shoulders. And I take it your father doesn't think you need anything for this tension? She sounded upset, but her hands applied the same gentle pressure. It's not healthy, you know. He twitched his shoulders in tiny shrugs. I get scheduled for deep tissue massages after the really long shoots, but the short ones don't seem to warrant it, and they can be scheduled back to back for weeks. Her hands felt so good and warm and strong against the muscles of his neck, and he couldn't help the throaty hum that was his version of a purr when not transformed. She stopped instantly. Oh, did I hurt you? I'm... No! He tipped his head back to look at her upside down, making his eyes wide and pleading. If it's not making you uncomfortable, could you please keep rubbing? It feels so good and it really helps me to relax. She blushed a darker shade of pink and nodded, biting her lip nervously. He smiled up at her gratefully before lowering his head once more. <laughs> is there somewhere that is especially tight? She asked sensibly, her hands drifting slowly back to his shoulders with the lightest of touches, making him shiver. This was so much better than his chin scratches. Oh, if only he was transformed so that he could have the satisfaction of purring. Then he could show her without words exactly what she was doing to him and how it made him feel. But she might just faint finding out the superhero she had a crush on was now crushing on her in the form of her boring classmate. Plague would be howling with laughter if he could see them now. He loved irony. Yeah, he murmured, tapping the base of his skull and the muscle group at the base of his neck. Without hesitation, she proceeded to knead his shoulders once more, as if it was a lump of stubborn bread dough that wouldn't stay shaped. She slowly worked up his neck with her thumbs, altering back and forth with firm pushing motions that made his eyes widen in relief as well as recognition. He was a dork after all. When he first realised that he had some cat-related quirks, he looked up everything he could find about cat behaviours, just in case it ever came up in unexpected ways. He had paid special attention to the conflict regarding the tendencies in cats to need his people. Some people insisted it was because the cat had been improperly weaned from his mother, but more recent studies suggested it was more primal than that. Scent glands in cats' paws marked items or people when a cat needed them, marking them as their clan or special to them. Adrian knew for a fact that he had unintentionally scent marked Ladybug due to all the tumbles and saves they had over the years, but for Marinette to unknowingly scent mark him? She's claiming you as a special? His inner cat squealed. She's your queen and she is marking you as a tom. He was equally torn between rolling over for tommy pups and just whipping her around his lap for kisses. Marinette? He murmured, reaching up to squeeze her fingers with his own. I would really... Hey DC! Nino didn't say you were giving shoulder rubs. Kim called loudly for everyone around the large pool to hear. I could really do one too. I pulled a muscle lifting. Adrian growled, his eyes snapping to the intruder angrily. Sorry Kim, I've got my hands full with Adrian here, she quipped, squeezing his shoulders slightly. Why don't you swim some gentle laps? That usually eases your common strains, doesn't it? Come on, DC, he replied sarcastically. You just like it that Adrian asked you, so now I'm asking and he already had his turn. At least then you can claim you have rubbed the shoulders of a model and a star athlete. Adrian rose to his feet, fists clenched and stared Kim in the eye. The lady declined. Why can't you leave it at that? Kim made a rude noise and rolled his eyes. Pfft, as if aggress. We both know I would win any tussle we get into. Besides, DC and I have been friends since we were kids. She never ignored an old friend, would you, sweetheart? He leaned in to put an arm around Marinette's shoulder. Adrian moved to push the intruder out of his queen's space, but she moved first. 
Only his years of being cat noir allowed him to piece together what she did. It was too fast to see otherwise. She turned, grabbing Kim's wrist and shoulder and sent him flying head over heels into the deep end of the pool. The jock came up for air, a shocked look on his face that Adrian knew was a mirror of his own. He knew that move, was so intimately familiar with it, as Ladybug had known to use it against him when he used to sneak up on her during patrols. True, Marinette's mother was a master in martial arts and she could have easily taught her daughter, but to have done it in a split second without telegraphing her intentions? There was only one person who could have done that. I think the sun is getting to you, Kim, she called, fists on hips in a confident stance. You had better cool off for a while. Their fellow classmates cheered and Alex fell into the pool, howling with laughter. Nino and Alia came up to them, wreathing with smiles. Dude, that was awesome. So glad Alia was filming that. Best birthday present ever, Marinette. She blushed and giggled, returning the hug he gave her. Adrian pouted for a minute, but Nino and Marinette had known each other forever and he knew better than to get jealous over a friendship hug. After all, he had been the one to get the shoulder rubs. So girl, do you think you got Adrian covered? We heard he was a handful. Adrian's mouth opened and his face burned. Marinette spluttered, arms akimbo in panic before she whimpered, Alia! <laughs> Better catch up, you two, Alia said with a smirk. We're gonna play chicken and there is no way I want to play against Alex. She scratches. You better believe it, called the girl from the edge of a pool where she held a sponge in one hand, waiting to deck Kim when he came up for air. They all chuckled and Nino threw him a wink before Alia dragged him off. Adrian? Marinette murmured, her face flushed darkly and her hands tucked shyly behind her back. I'm... He grabbed her wrist and pulled her into the small building that housed the showers and locker rooms. Adrian, what are you doing? She asked breathlessly and confused. Too many eyes and ears, he whispered as he found an empty corner out of sight of anyone coming in or out. Marinette, what you did out there, that, that was... His voice was lost as a deep blue eye stared at him nervously in the gloom of the hallway. His heart was thrashing against his ribs and his jaw ached from keeping himself from kissing her. Adrian, I'm sorry if I embarrassed you. I didn't mean to, but you asked me to rub your shoulders and Kim was being pushy. She stopped instantly as he cupped her face and pressed his forehead to hers his breathing ragged with excitement and uncertainty. What did you mean, what you said earlier? What did I say? That I'm not a centrefold, that I'm more than my day job, that I should stand up for what I want. She sighed in relief and pulled him into a hug. Of course! That's why I hate it when Alia calls you that or Lila hangs all over you as if you were arm candy. You are so much more than just a pretty face and you deserve so much more than just superficial fame and attention. But there is only so much we can do to help you get it. You need to fight for yourself too, Adrian. He pulled away slightly, gently rubbing her cheeks with his thumb as his hand cradled her jaw. This was the moment. He was all in, for better or worse, especially what he did now. He leaned close, his nose brushing hers and the breath blended in the space between, but she didn't pull away. And what if you're what I want, my lady? Her eyes went round in surprise. Her lips opened and closed several times, but no words came out. Finally, she whispered the words that made his heart sing. Kitty? He couldn't help but grin. Live and in person. 
she sighed dejectively, gently leaving his embrace to lean against the wall. How did you figure me out? Her sudden withdrawal left him feeling cold and empty. The throw? The one you used on Kim? I could recognize that all too well. When it's being used to throw you off a building, it's kind of burn into your brain. Besides, there is only one person I know who could do it that fast. Ladybug, she murmured, and he nodded. So, it was never me you were interested in, just... He stopped her with a finger to her lips, blushing as the contact sent sparks up his arm. Marinette, you are amazing, with or without the mask, and you have been driving me crazy for months without knowing how to tell you. I knew Ladybug wasn't in love with Cat, and when it finally got through to me, all I could think about was you. Ask Nino, if you don't believe me, I've been an absolute mess over you, and he thinks it's hilarious for some reason. Me? Marinette? Me. Yes, you, princess. She blushed and his heart rate quickened with hope as he leaned closer to her. When you started to rub my shoulders out there, I thought you were going to give me a heart attack. It was all I could do to not pounce on you right there and then in front of everyone. He lowered his voice and pressed his forehead to hers once more. Please, tell me it wasn't all in my head, Marinette. You know me without my mask. Please tell me I have someone to love and fight for. She gave a little gasp and that was all the answer he needed. Pulling her against him, he claimed her lips like he was suffocating and she was pure fresh air. Without hesitation, she rolled up on her toes to reach him better, her hands tangled in the hair at the back of his neck. Without breaking the kiss, he scooped her up in his arms in a bridal hold, the soft skin of her legs sending hot tingles all over him. All that mattered was her arms around her neck, her nimble form draped in his arms, and her hungry kiss making him burn in a star named Marinette. Marinette, he panted between kisses. I love you so much it hurts. Be mine. I need you. Always. You. Ever since Umbrella. The telltale chirp of a cell phone message echoed off the walls around them, startling them both out of their intimate moment in time to see Nino grinning widely and Alia frantically pushing buttons. Bro, I was so wrong. This is the best birthday present ever. Ever. No, 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 no! No, no, no! Alia wailed, drooping in disappointment. Adrian knew he was blushing as pink as his princess, but he couldn't help the giddy grin that was spread across his face. Let me guess, your phone died? Worse! Alia shook her head. Ran out of storage! The moment my bestie finally caught her man and I lose it? <laughs> Marinette giggled. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Adrian caught me. Her words were a tonic to his anxious heart, filling him up with joy and love. Alia's mouth fell open and he couldn't help but preen a little as Nino punched the air in celebration of his friend's success. Adrian nuzzled her hair with his nose, breathing her in and drowning in a gentle scent. He hummed in contentment, knowing his whole world was right there beside him in his arms. Dude, when you hum like that, it sounds almost like you're purring. He let out a small smirk at his lips, gazing down adoringly at his lady princess, cradling against his chest. I guess it's kind of appropriate, considering I caught myself a little mouse. He wriggled his eyebrows at her cheekily, and she stunned him with a firm kiss. When she pulled away, he staggered back against the wall so both of them wouldn't fall to the concrete floor. Nino and Alia tried and failed to smother their laughter, and Marinette looked pleased with herself. At least I know how to shake you up, she murmured in a tone that made his heart pound even harder. I definitely prefer it to being tossed headfirst into the pool. 
he replied, lost once more in the ocean of her eyes. Go on, babe, he heard Nina say as footsteps receded down the hall. I have a feeling we're going to need to find something else to do. I think my bro's got a game of cat and mouse planned. Adrian hummed in approval as her friends left. Mmm, sounds good. What do you think, little mouse? She pressed her lips against his with an eagerness that thrilled him to his core. Who would have thought that you could bait a mousetrap with sun cream? Thank you for listening to this one shot. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, at the moment, it's currently a heat wave happening in Scotland, so I thought it was quite appropriate. Make sure you go and send Sheikah some love for writing it. Make sure you send me some love by smashing that like button. Comment down below what you thought of it. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on other series and one shots and other things that are happening at the moment and I hope you are good enjoying your summer stay safe and I'll speak to you soon bye